Hey everyone, in the space of a week and a half, it seems that the reasonable protests of a man's death have escalated rather quickly. We've seen a series of marches, riots and angry demands extending from everything from police reform to more fringe ideas like banning the TV show Thomas the Tank Engine and demanding that Scotland remove statues of Wallace the Bruce on the spurious grounds that he was racist for not employing African Americans in 13th century Scotland. Or perhaps it's because they're confusing him with Mel Gibson. Ladies and gentlemen, you may wish to call me Rod Sterling because for the next few minutes we've really crossed into the twilight zone here. It's a dimension not only of sight and sound but of mind. Wait a minute, no, it's, it's not of mind, it's a mindless rabble where the political and media class are too terrified of being seen as politically incorrect to tell people to go back to writing letters to the Morning Star or setting up a poll on Twitter. Now, this isn't the idiots left in charge of the asylum because then at least the problems would be mostly in the vicinity of the asylum and I don't live near that place. And at least an asylum would give us movies like Silence of the Lambs or One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest rather than banning movies. Gone with the Wind was recently banned by HBO Max, a film which in a bizarre twist of irony actually featured the first black Oscar winner. But let's ban it anyway until the Academy issues statues in a range of colours, not just gold. You know, that film's whole plot as well is that the South loses the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln frees the slaves. But these are the people that in London vandalised the Abraham Lincoln statue on the basis that he lived a long time ago, so he must have been a slave-owning racist. And goodness knows what they'd have to say about a box set of the Avengers if they saw the actress's name Honor Blackman. To this day, I'm still unsure as to what the protesters in London even want Boris Johnson to do with regards to police reform in Wisconsin. It's rather like demanding that your MP makes Apple go back to having USB ports on its laptop, or picketing a branch of Tesco because your rail season ticket went up this year. At least I think that rail tickets are one of the few things that Tesco doesn't sell yet. I guess it's probably more useful than protesting outside a corporate office that's unsurprisingly empty because everyone's working from home apart from the protesters. Then, as I say, we're in bizarro world territory here anyway. I was especially intrigued by the furious demands to ban the TV show Paw Patrol, in which 3D puppies help children solve problems and fix things. Supposedly, the rage is over the fact that the puppies dress up as emergency workers and one of them wears a little policeman's hat and badge. Personally, I've never seen the episode in which the fictional dog kills people or uses racial slurs, not even to the other coloured dogs. Perhaps it's on a DVD special, besides my kids are more into Ben and Holly right now. Let's look to America, though, where they've been having a riot. Literally a riot. A six-block section of Seattle's being run by a social commune where there were apparently no rules and everyone solves things in a partnership. Which in practice, of course, means it's a borderline active war zone with looting, people unable to get food or clean water, and seems very much like something out of a movie. You know, at least I think it's like a movie. It's been months since I've been to the cinema. Either way, very little is likely to actually happen now, legally speaking, what with any good faith and public support for this movement now destroyed, very much like a torched branch of Foot Locker or a mobile phone store robbed of all its pretend demonstration phones. A crime presumably carried out by people in such a frenzy that they were probably stealing more of the phones advertised as 50% off. You know, if protesters had remained peaceful, they may have actually achieved something like police reform, or at the very least preventing police unions from keeping convicted officers on the payroll. Instead, it was transformed into a culture war, and in an us-versus-them situation, most people will side with the people that don't want to ban Citizen Kane because it's described as black and white. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.